Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Diana, if you guys are new here, and if you're not, welcome back to the channel. First off, I wanted to say, if you guys are not following me on social media, give me a follow. I'm gonna put my name down here so that we can get connected, we can become best friends, we can become you and I, like, let's connect. Now, let's get to the good stuff, shall we? Today we're doing a new style of videos. It's going to be more of a sit down video. I'm going to be uh, essentially sharing my resume as a 22 year old um, in video form. <laughs> I will have my LinkedIn tagged below just in case you want to check it out. I saw a couple of these types of videos online um, on YouTube and I was really interested. I've had a few people ask me what it is that I do, what have I done. Um, just because I've mentioned like work and things like that throughout a few of my videos as well as social media So I figured I would make a video about it and it might be interesting Also, feel free to let me know what you do in your daily life What your work life looks like, where you started, where you went to school, if you went to school, etc Just put it all down for me in the comments down below I would love to get to know all of you But anyways, let's get started Today, our beverage is um, a kombucha. This is the Health Aid Booch Pop. I've been really liking these little like cans as opposed to like the big bottles because the big bottle always takes me like two days to finish this one. I don't know if it's just because it's in a can or what, but I always finish it really quick. And the flavor is lemon lime. It's super, super good. So if you guys are into kombucha, highly recommend trying this one out. But anyways, so I want to bring it back, like way, way back. I started working when I was 15. Um, I was homeschooled in high school, so I was able to get a job pretty quickly. Uh, we lived in Portland at the time, so I literally like went out and gave my resume to everybody. I believe I printed like 50 copies and was literally just like here you go here you go here you go here you go I literally I just wanted a job and I think like growing up all I really wanted was a job I wanted to go to college I wanted to grow up I wanted to have this like fancy job and my job was not fancy at 15 I was a sandwich artist for Subway <laughs> I actually remember like the day that I went in there I asked to speak with a manager she came out I gave her my resume she like had me interview the following day I literally went to a coffee shop next door an hour early and I sat there practicing I don't know what I was practicing it was my first interview but I googled and YouTubed a bunch of videos so I was practicing and it like um i like i went overboard i remember telling her the three words that can describe me are ambitious resilient and punctual or something like that i was just like she i remember she was kind of staring at me and she's just like all right girl you're not interviewing to be the next president of the united states you're interviewing to work at subway so calm down <laughs> but i guess my practicing paid off because i was hired on right away it was great um i was so excited i remember my mom was so proud of me for getting my first job it was like the best day ever um and then the next day i walked to work the job was like 10 minute walk away from my house and i was so excited and i remember working and i was like this is it. <laughs> this is exciting. This is, is this is as exciting as it's going to get. I'm making sandwiches all day, and I remember thinking it smelled so bad in there every single day. And we had to like clean out um, like those the cookie area. You guys know. I'm sure everybody's everybody knows the cookies that you get at Subway. They're super soft. Blah 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 blah. But you guys like some people do not clean that stuff out. Okay. Like, I work there, and some of my coworkers, they just, they were like, here's a dirty rag, wipe it with this dirty rag, and that's it. And I'm like, no, that's gross. I honestly lasted there less than two weeks, because I ended up getting an interview at Olive Garden. 
um, which was like in the next plaza over and I was like I'm taking it I can't I can't continue being a sandwich artist I know that I'm fabulous but I have to go so I ended up um, giving my two weeks and then I went over to Subway and I worked there as a hostess um, for actually a really long time I ended up working there for a total of like almost five years because I worked there as a hostess and then I became a to-go specialist and then I became a waitress um, if you guys see me looking down it's because I literally wrote down an entire sheet of like where I've worked so anyways I really actually liked it I I like the restaurant business I'm not like I feel like when you become of age to work you either start working in the restaurant business or retail and I went straight to restaurant because my cousin she actually always works in a bunch of restaurants and she made a, a lot of freaking money <laughs> like she always said that like tips were really really good so I was like yep that's that's the way I'm gonna go I'm not a fan of retail but I am a fan of food so that's the route that I chose to take I obviously worked up to be a, um, a waitress because you have to be you have to be 21 to be a waitress or no you have to be 18 you have to be 18 to be a waitress um I lived in Portland until I believe I was like 19 no nah, like 18 I think yeah 18 and then me and my mom and my sisters moved to Seattle and I actually was able to get transferred to a different Olive Garden which is where I ended up continuing to work as a hostess and a to-go specialist and I actually didn't have a job for like I want to say like three weeks and it was terrible I was so broke I literally like I, ha I had a little bit of savings which I was utilizing but it was terrible not having a job I ended up going to that Olive Garden that I ended up working at like every other day calling them 24 7 I was like can I work there like when are we gonna do an interview this and that um, but luckily I ended up getting hired on and it was, it was a good experience. I mean, like Olive Garden, I already knew like the ropes and everything. So it was a very smooth and easy transfer. And then I actually ended up getting another job. I started working at the Cheesecake Factory because um, that same cousin that I mentioned, she worked, she used to work there as well. So I decided to apply and because of her, I ended up getting the job there and Honestly, like this is gonna sound so weird, but I I made so much money at Cheesecake Factory I think it's because you get so many tables as a waitress there um, at Olive Garden You only get three tables in your section, but at the Cheesecake Factory you get like six seven so it's like you turn those puppies and you're just making bank especially because I mean it's not like Cheesecake Factory is super pricey, but uh, people get like a lot of things and then you always just upsell with the drinks like you see somebody finish their drink and you're like you want another don't you so it's really easy to upsell and I was I mean like not to brag but I was a pretty good waitress so that worked out really well for me so throughout the time that I was working at Olive Garden and the Cheesecake Factory I was also going to college I was going well I was finishing out high school but um, in Washington, they have like a um, running start, which essentially you can start taking college classes while finishing or while, yeah, finishing out high school. So I was doing that and the degree that I was going for was um, engineering. I actually wanted to be a software engineer, just like my cousin, because she was amazing. So I actually ended up living with her for like two years. Um, but anyway, so I was going to college for that. Um, I was like 18-ish, so I was like I was very lost in terms of what I wanted to do I like I've always wanted to be a writer and that has always kind of been in the back of my head but because of like what I was surrounded with like I lived with my cousin she was a software engineer I saw that she had a really good stable living and I was like I, I think I should go for this and like my mom encouraged me to do it so I was like I'm just gonna go for it why not so I ended up um, taking classes for that and I was working at Olive Garden, the Cheesecake Factory, taking taking classes, and then I ended up quitting the Cheesecake Factory because it was just too far from my house. It was like almost an hour drive, and I would get off work at like 11 or 12 o'clock at night, and then it would take me like an hour to drive back. It was just it was just a hassle. I ended up.
just keeping my job at Olive Garden. And then a few months later, I ended up quitting because I just needed something new. Working at a corporate restaurant is hard. That's all I have to say. I ended up getting a job at Jimmy Max Roadhouse, which was in the next plaza over from the Olive Garden that I worked at. And that was a family restaurant. And it was probably one of the best jobs I've ever had, honestly. It was so much fun. Everybody was so nice there. It was like a family atmosphere. Um, there were peanuts on the floor. It was like a steakhouse, beer, drinks, all of this stuff. Honestly, I made major buckaroos there it was a great job i had that job i want to say for like two years and throughout that time i ended up dropping out of school i ended up taking like um being accepted into this program called europe where essentially for six months you like learn all of these tech skills and then you are placed into an internship for the next six months so i ended up doing that and basically my internship ended up being at yahoo so i worked with the entertainment team the tv and media team actually that's what it was called and i was an intern there and i was a data analyst for them and i, I was getting paid but i wasn't getting paid that much so i kept my job at jimmy max roadhouse and then um, towards the end of the six months, we actually found out that the team that I was on was getting cut so I wouldn't be able to work there essentially and throughout that time I ended up utilizing essentially all of my like co-workers and they taught me all of these things that I could utilize in my career. I learned Python and SQL and like all of these like things that you need to know in the tech world and I ended up finishing off that internship, I ended up graduating the program, getting the certificate, and then I ended up with two job offers, which was really great. I ended up getting a job at a tech startup called Carrot. I was an operations coordinator there, and then I ended up getting a job at a, a company called Astronix, which, which is an aerospace tech company, and I was a financial specialist there, which, like, both really, really, like, kind of random <laughs> not, not I mean like the financial specialist part was like a little strange because that was not even relatively in the same field that I was in but I decided to go for it because it was technically like my first real like adult job so I just went for it and that job ended up being an hour away from where I lived it was in Kirkland I lived in um, Federal Way and I still did it. I ended up I ended up having a pretty crazy schedule when I had that job because I also was working at the other new job that I got at the tech startup, but that was a work from home job. And then I was also working at Jimmy Max Roadhouse on the weekends because I wanted to keep that waitressing gig. So I worked at Astronix, I wanna say for like six months or like four. Something, some, it was definitely under a year. So I was working there. Um, I like literally, like I said, I had the craziest schedule when I worked there. I would wake up at like three. I would go to the gym and work out and shower there. And then I would get ready. I would drive to Dutch Bros and get the cocoa mold. That was like my favorite drink ever. It literally had like 500 calories. So I don't know what I was thinking. Like work out, go drink 500 calories, and then go to work, but whatever. Um, so then I would go to work, and the drive was like the most beautiful thing ever because I would see the sunrise and everything, so it was amazing. But um, after that, I would go to work, and then I started at six, so that way I could finish early, and then I ended up going to my mom's house literally like every day because she lived very close to Kirkland. She lived in Bellevue. So I would go to her house, have dinner, hang out, and then once the traffic cleared up, then I would go home. And then on, let's see, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, at night, no, on Saturdays and Sundays at night, I would work at Carrot, the tech startup, which was from home, and it was, my shift would be from like 6 to midnight, and then um, Friday, Friday night, I would work at Jimmy Max, Saturday morning I would work at Jimmy Max, and Sunday morning I would work at Jimmy Max. So my schedule is pretty, pretty packed. Um, but I did that for the entirety of the time that I worked, that I was working at like Astronix and all of that. It was probably like, it was like five, six months. I believe it was like that. And the entire time I was um, planning my move to California and saving for my move to California. Literally every penny that I made that was going into my savings account so that I could move to LA and live my life <laughs> and I really had like no plans 
for when I did come to California, I know that I wanted a change. I knew that I wanted opportunities, different opportunities than the ones that I was given in Seattle. I knew that I wanted to leave tech. I knew that I was not my passion. It was not what I wanted to do. Um, but I just, I had no, like, no idea of what I should pursue. I knew that I was going to go back to school, but I didn't know what I was going to go back to school for. Um, I knew that I wanted to be a writer and I knew that I wanted to do something that was centered around film and movies and things like that. So I just, I decided to move to LA and then I saved up enough money. Um, I ended up finding an apartment on Craigslist. It was like the most random thing ever. I was so blessed. My roommates were amazing. But anyways, I ended up um, driving to San Francisco. No, I drove to Portland. I met up with a really good old friend. I had breakfast with her and then I drove to San Francisco. I stayed there overnight and then the following day I went to LA and then I stayed in Torrance for like two days. I all this time keep in mind I was still working at Carrot so I had that job which was work from home job I was an operations coordinator there it was pretty boring I continued working at Carrot and then I realized that I did not want to work there anymore um, it actually my reason why was because it just it didn't align with my lifestyle because there was no opportunity for growth in the direction that I wanted to grow in and essentially the scheduling was very difficult because working there you literally have to be glued to your computer and it was just a struggle for me because I had just moved, I was starting to explore these new options, I was starting to do these new things and I just felt like it was not what I wanted to continue doing. I started school again. <laughs> um, I was taking classes and this time instead of engineering I was going for English. Um, I ended up not getting my English degree. I just it just did not work out. Um, partially because of fi finances. I just could not pay for it. It was expensive. I was living in LA on my own and my job at Care it literally paid me barely enough. So I ended up leaving and I ended up going back to working at a restaurant. I got a job at Rose Cafe, which is right in Venice Beach. Um, I started working there, waitressing. It was, you know, like as weird as it's gonna sound, I enjoyed it significantly more than I than Carrot or any of the other tech jobs that I had because I met so many people there. I met so many celebrities there. I met Paul Wesley, which is Stefan from the Vampire Diaries, literally the love of my life. Um, aside from Mihai, um, I'm still upset that Elena left him for Damon, but it's fine, it's fine. Um, I also met Amelia Clark from Game of Thrones, hello. And then I, who else? I met Jillian Michaels, I met, there were like a ton of other celebrities that came in. It's the spot in Venice. But anyways, I worked there for for a couple of months and throughout the entire time I was actually just like going through gigs online I was doing book reviews which you don't get paid much for book reviews but I enjoyed it because you get a free book and then you review it and you get paid for it so that was nice and then I also like just did a little bit of freelance writing and that was it was interesting but you I didn't get paid much I think that is just because I didn't look hard enough for like the good gigs Plus, I didn't have that much experience, so that was that. Um, but anyways, I worked at Rose for a little while, and then I ended up meeting somebody who got me a job as a babysitter because um, I just I didn't I, because they were offering to pay me a lot more than I was getting paid as a waitress. So I ended up babysitting. It was super random because I like kids, but like. Being a waitress and seeing very, um, what's that word, like misbehaved children, it really, it really just, it makes you like very like, I don't know how to explain it, it makes you shudder sometimes. So I was very nervous, but when I met the person that I was going to be working for and when I met um, her son, it was am an amazing experience. She was really nice, so I ended up kind of like meeting a friend and I didn't have that many friends in LA at this point still, but it was nice. She was great. 
um her son was adorable it literally like he was the cutest thing ever so i did that for i want to say like six months um and then i ended up getting a interview at warner brothers which i should have mentioned this like way way earlier but warner brothers has been a company that i've wanted to work with for a very very long time um unfortunately i did not get the job with warner brothers because the position that i wanted was i literally had no history within that realm i wanted to be a script reader and eventually become a screenplay writer because i wanted to write and i wanted to work with movies obviously but because my background was so all over the place they didn't really know what to do with me and it probably cost more to train me than it, than than anything um but i had quite a few interviews with them it was a very stressful process um seeing warner brothers and actually going there was pretty insane i actually went on like the set of friends the set of pretty little liars like it was so so weird to walk through it and see where my favorite shows and movies have been filmed um it was it was overall an incredible incredible experience i i still like a part of me really wishes that i had gotten the job but i didn't i think that's the only job that i've never gotten that i've interviewed for that i really really wanted um i feel like everything else that i've that i've been blessed with was was a blessing and i'm very grateful for it but all of it has always been more so to pay the bills and build up my resume things like that whereas warner brothers was something that i genuinely wanted but it's fine it worked out for the best because um i ended up getting a different position at yahoo which is where i had interned previously if you remember i ended up working there as an operations coordinator and that was really fun it was actually like i it was actually like i don't know it was really nice i learned a lot i had literally the best manager ever i had one other co-worker on my team that i worked with this team was the entertainment team but we worked like on an app together um and i had one co-worker that i always talked to he was great it was really nice it felt like i had a friend <laughs> and throughout that i was trying to also figure out what i wanted to do because this job was a contract job which meant there was going to end and so i wanted to figure out what i wanted to do but i knew that i didn't want to do tech anymore so i actually ended up becoming a food blogger i had my own, i built my own website i made a ton of healthy recipes i don't know what it is that made me want to become a food blogger because as i've mentioned throughout this video i wanted to be a writer i wanted to work with movies but the friend group that i was in the people that i kind of knew they were all youtube influencers or youtubers or instagrammers like whatever and they were also all very into fitness and i was very into fitness but um i didn't really like i didn't really think that i could fit into like the fitness world um and mihai mentioned that i was a really good cook so he was like what if you just what if you try to do food blogging because i was really into taking food photos i was super into making like new healthy recipes things like that so i became a food blogger and one of my friends told me that i should start a youtube channel and kind of make food videos and things like that on there so i decided to do that i was like why not so i started making recipe videos food food videos i even ended up doing like a little bit of fitness stuff in there too and then i was just overwhelmed i guess i had no idea what i wanted to do i felt all over the place i was what like 21 yeah i was like 21 and i was like i don't know what to do with my life i don't like being a food blogger i don't like working in tech i just i've tried literally everything that can ensure a good income and i don't enjoy any of it so covid hit i ended up losing my job at yahoo and i was like all right i'm gonna do it okay sorry my camera literally died i feel like it always dies during something important um anyways so yeah, a part of me really feels like 
it was kind of like a blessing in disguise because I would have stayed there for I don't know how long pursuing something that I wasn't necessarily passionate about just to pay the bills and I continued to put off things that I truly cared about and it felt very like I don't know I just I kept telling myself I was very 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 upset and I didn't know what to do when it all happened but I just kept telling myself that this is a blessing in disguise something good is gonna come out of it and I don't know I just kept telling myself that and it's been a rough couple of months to figure it all out but I definitely think that I've been figuring it out I've been so far um, I've been pursuing my writing I've been pursuing YouTube I obviously don't get paid for YouTube but I do it because I genuinely enjoy it and I have switched over from making like food content um, on my YouTube channel to more lifestyle content because that way I can actually share all of the things that I genuinely care about and it's not just food <laughs> but so far YouTube has been really really fun for me and I want to continue pursuing that um, but as for like my work related things now my goal has been for a while and now officially going to be to be a published author I write on a platform called Medium now. It's taken me over a year, I want to say, to make some money off of it. And for the last few months, I've kind of been investing into myself in terms of learning how to be a better writer, writing better for people, and just kind of like navigating through writing. And um, I've been doing mostly just like freelance work stuff, ghostwriting, things like that, pitching magazines and like things like that. Um, I've worked with a swimwear company where I was able to write an article for them things just things of that nature it seems very unstable and it is but a part of me really likes it because I'm just living my life and I'm going after the things that I want and it feels so scary but I think that that's what makes life interesting you're doing something out of your comfort zone and you're you're not you don't necessarily know where it's going to take you but you have like this feeling inside of you and you're like i know that this is going to go somewhere good uh, so that is the resume of a 22 year old i wouldn't say it's um a typical resume of a 22 year old because i feel like i have a very broad resume <laughs> at the end of the day um but it, you know that's i feel like that's just how life is you, you never know what you're gonna get into um i had no idea that i was going to start off as a sandwich artist and become a financial specialist um to a writer but we are here and we're working with it anyways thank you so much for watching this video if you guys liked it please give me a big thumbs up if you want more like tips ideas if you want any more if you have any questions about how i got any of my tech jobs or if you guys want any interview ideas suggestions or any of that feel free to leave me a comment down below also don't forget to tell me where you guys work i would love to know more about you but i'm going to leave it at that i hope you enjoyed it thank you again so much for watching and i will see you in the next video bye Money on my mind.